about a year ago, I was supposed to give this TED talk. I had a whole speech planned to talk about the importance of stepping outside of our comfort zones. I was going to share some stories of tumultuous times in my hockey career leading up to being recruited to play here at Bentham. And then I was going to encourage the audience that they too could seek out discomfort and grow. But then we had a global pandemic and everyone was forced into one of the weirdest, most uncomfortable worlds ever. Let's just take, take a moment to stop and realize what's actually going on. Here. Think about it. We're sitting at home in our house, but we're not just sitting anywhere in our house. No, we've strategically placed ourselves in the best outlet and window location for optimal lighting and charging purposes. How does this become normal? But the point of the matter is that speech, the one that I was supposed to give a year ago, well, Everyone's already done it. Everyone's been uncomfortable. So what am I gonna talk about now? If you were to ponder the idea of a 25 hour day a year ago, chances are you'd be pretty excited at how you could spend the extra time. You would think up ways to be more productive at work or school, fun things to do with your friends and family, and that much needed couch time in front of the TV. I don't know about you guys, but now, the thought of 25 hours in a day sends me into a state of catastrophic shock. With the experience of a worldwide pandemic under our belt, things have definitely changed. For most of us, we found ourselves swimming in time, working or studying from home, and then almost immediately drowning in time. But why? I thought we wanted more time to try out that new Rachel Ray recipe we saw in the news, or finally start that blog we've been meaning to post or to spend more time at home with family. Perhaps our problem isn't that we need more time. Maybe it's that we need to change how we're spending our time. Perhaps we don't actually need 25 hours. Perhaps 24 hours is enough. It's in our nature to believe that 25 hours in a day would be better than 24 hours. The achiever in all of us sees this and thinks about how far we could get ahead how much more productivity would increase, how much more we could achieve. But let's take one huge step further because this is a TED Talk after all and understand that this isn't just about time. This is about how we see the world. More time means more choice to do what we want. More choice means more opportunities to get more. Getting more means having more. Having more is better than having less, right? Get more productive, get more friends, get more studying done to get a better GPA, get more memories to get a better life. It doesn't matter what it is. We just seem to not quite have enough of it. Now this natural response to never being satisfied with our lives has historically benefited us greatly. Like hundreds of years ago when we used to make fire by rubbing two sticks together, somewhere somebody said, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna settle for this whole rubbing sticks together for heating thing. And bam, we got fireplaces. Okay, maybe it wasn't quite as easy as that, but you get the point, right? This unsatisfied nature is what allowed us to evolve as humans. But now, in 2021, we're pretty evolved. We have everything we need to survive, plus all the luxuries on top. So why is it that while we're sitting on our Lazy Boy couch, watching a multi-million dollar movie production on our high-def plasma screen, talking to our friend from a different country through a device that fits in our pocket, that we aren't just constantly elated with joy all of the time? Perhaps it's because that same unsatisfied evolutionary engine is still churning in the back of our heads. Except now we've run out of things to buy, inventions to conceive and tangible things to get. 24 hours is enough. Now the problems of unsettledness don't lie in the material world, but rather in the immaterial world. 
It's in the intangibles that we all grasp onto and feel we need to live well. It's those thoughts of, I need to be more liked. I need to be more popular. I need to be more fun. I need to be more healthy. And the most prominent one, I need to have more happiness. This is where we get into trouble because wanting material things like a new house or a car is external and can't hurt us that much if we don't get it. Wanting something internally, however, actually messes with our psychology. 24 hours is enough. Let's take the example of wanting a new car. Let's say I really want to get a Lamborghini, but when I show up at the dealership and talk prices, my negotiation skills inevitably fall short and I end up not being able to buy it. Chances are I'll feel like I failed and I'll be upset for a few days, but then I'll realize it's really not a big deal. I'll drive to the mall one day, take a look around, and notice that not too many other people are driving Lamborghinis either. And, hey, I'll realize that they're not that great in the snow anyways, because I am Canadian. But what happens when we tell ourselves we want to be happier, healthier, more likable? Well, we'll work towards building more productive schedules so we can feel good about our days and We'll make more plans with friends so we can feel confident that we're liked. And this works most of the time. I don't know about you guys, but I find it almost impossible to always feel my best. And looking around us for other people that maybe aren't having their most positive emotions either, like noticing how not a lot of other people are driving Lamborghinis, is actually really hard to do. Because we live in a society where negative emotions aren't something people explicitly show all that often. The kicker is, when we're not feeling our best, maybe a little sad, maybe a little lonely, we instinctually reach for the one thing that could make it worse, our phone. And on that phone, we use our social media platforms as a last chance effort to feel better, feel connected to something. But on it instead, we see that Jess and Keith, that cute couple everyone loved in high school, just got engaged. But they didn't just get engaged anywhere, but on top of a mountain. And Jess's hair looks perfect. And Emma just ate at that five-star restaurant owned by the guy that drizzles salt like this, and her hair looks perfect. And Eli, Joanne, and Brent just landed in Maui, and their hair looks perfect. Why does everyone's hair look perfect on social media? The point is, when we're feeling our weakest emotionally, we instantly compare ourselves to the emotional highlights of others' lives. And we're happy for these people, but let's be honest, it's the kind of happy for you you see between the bride and the distant relatives at a wedding. Everyone knows they just came for the cake. What's really happening is we're comparing ourselves to these people. And next thing you know, we're feeling less of ourselves and we're reminding ourselves that we need more. The 24 hours is enough. Alan Watts, a modern philosopher, once coined the phrase, the backward law. The backward law states that the more you pursue something you don't already have, the less satisfied you become, as pursuing that thing only reinforces the fact that you lack it in the first place. So now you're probably thinking, okay, so what you're saying is I really shouldn't pursue anything in life. I should just be happy with making no progress or develop at all. Obviously, this isn't true. There's going to be some things that we want and need to pursue in life in order to grow up and be self-sufficient. But we need to be remarkably aware of the dangers of seeking to feel certain emotions. More. This is what's dangerous about the more is better mindset. So let's carefully monitor what we need more of in life and what we need to appreciate more that's already in our life. Because after all, what if we actually don't need more time? We just need to spend the time that we already have on stuff that actually matters to us. What if we don't need more things, we just need the right things? 
why not practice the ability to enjoy just as much as the ability to achieve? Why not place enthusiasm on where we are now just as much as where we want to be next? So when this TEDx event ends, we all close our laptops. I want you to ask yourself what you can do today. So tomorrow, you're not looking for that extra hour. 24 hours is enough.